What's up? It's Sunday. Saw the markets had a very interesting week. The biggest tech companies in the world reported, for the most part, exceeding expectations. Positive earnings being Apple, Amazon, and Facebook. Unfortunately, Google was down slightly. But those being the big carriers of the NASDAQ. But the S&P was up. On the week it was up about, looks like $50. Very interesting as we're in the midst of earnings season. Lots of big names coming up next week. Thank you, Earnings Whisper, for the earnings charts. We have officially approached the eighth month of 2020. So we're going to do our weekly randomized stock pick. Have this neat little hat. One hundred percent randomized. I think I'm the only one that is doing this randomized stock pick. So I literally just analyze it off the top of my head. And the pick. FedEx, Federal Express, be interesting to see where I place them, should be real fun to study them as well. So we'll start with the basics, FedEx, it's a multinational company based out of America, specifically in Memphis, Tennessee, where it was founded by CEO and Chairman Fred Smith. The company was founded in 1971. Originally it was called Federal Express Corporation before it changed its name to, as we all know, FedEx. As you can see, FedEx is a big lobbying company as has been in the history. Um, they once had a tax avoidance scandal. I'm not going to get too involved in that. Some of their com campaigns that you might have seen on TV. And they are big fans of sports as they sponsor the well-known FedEx Cup for golf. As well as they have a football stadium, FedEx Field, home of the National Football League's Washington football team, as they are now called. Or currently. Here's a neat story about the FedEx current logo. Linden says it symbolized direction, speed, and precision. And he wanted to make it hidden somewhat so that it has that sort of aha moment, which apparently the founder and CEO, Fred Smith, noticed it immediately and could be a reason as to why their logo was selected. Here's a really cool brief history of FedEx as can be seen on their website. I'm not going to read all of this but you can pause if you want as I'll browse through each heading. This was a big deal. They bought out Kinko's. Not, peop not many people even will probably remember that company back in 2004 where they rebranded it to FedEx Kinko's office and print centers. And of course the FedEx Cup. And I think this could be a big deal in the future where they're trying to get same day delivery robots to get that last mile deliveries to consumers for retailers. I thought this was interesting for the Every year, their annual reports, they have just really moving titles and motivational titles. 
you can almost just use these headings as motivational motivation for the day and it dates all the way back till 27, 1978. So I thought this was interesting. Just wanted to check out the pay of a FedEx worker. These are some of the jobs that are appearing on pay scale. As you can see, ranging from 11 to $26 average and upwards of the high 20s. So it's above minimum wage also and of course they should but just showing you if you do use FedEx they actually have you know an app you can download and track your packages it's pretty cool and useful I've used it before here's Alexa an Amazon company who is now a, somewhat a competitor to FedEx which they claim shouldn't really affect their business them being a competitor but anyways this is data for their actual website just showing you can see they're definitely growing in users on their website in the past three months and of course most of their users are from US Mexico and Japan I just thought that was interesting so here's their website pretty quick uh, it's a pretty unique website it's interesting you can track packages find some cool information about them complain if your package didn't arrive on time or applaud them if the delivery was a smooth process and by the way they actually patented a tracking system for finding packages and I got the here's the USPTO uh, Here's the USPTO website, and this is just some of their patents. And you can see, this is just a few. I think there's 50, 80, actually. This isn't all of them, but... And these are just ones related to tracking that are highlighted, that are highlighted. So they definitely have a slew of intellectual property. So I applaud them for that. Patents are not easy to get. And just for fun, I'll click on this. Let's see. So this is pretty cool. I'm not going to look too into this, but neat little tracking device. Here we'll do some analysis of Edgar via the SEC.gov. Check out a 10K annual report. Financial statements, consolidated balance sheet. And they do years a bit weird. Looks like they end on May 31st as their fiscal year end. More than double the cash and cash equivalents in terms of current assets. Total current, about $3 billion plus more all of their assets were positively changed even actually goodwill fell as you can see their long term debt minus current debt was up stems of income so this is just 12 month change you can see that it's slightly down year over year and looks like this was a couple of months were affected by the COVID hit but it's still positive growth from two years ago regardless in terms of revenue income was cut in half from a year ago and two years ago almost and their net income more than doubled from a year ago but surprisingly and I applaud you because they had positive net income 
while some of the other industries and companies are struggling to get the bottom line throughout COVID months. FedEx was profitable. Although you would kind of expect them to be profitable because a lot of heavy spending, especially by consumers, to get products delivered as opposed to walking to the stores. You can analyze this chart if you want on your own. I'm not going to go too deep into it. You can just see the three month changes year over year. Here we have some Yahoo Finance analysis. Neat little quick graph. So you can see earnings per share in the past year was almost $5. PE ratio past year is above 35, which is above the S&P and Dow Jones PE average beta. So they're a bit more volatile compared to the market. Market cap of around $44 billion. They just traded ex-dividend about a month ago. And this is showing yearly target estimate of about break even from where they're at now. Volume is about 2 million shares times 168. So more or less about $320 million of shares are exchanged daily. You can see the 50 two week range are kind of close to the upper part of that range and today they had about a four dollar to five dollar price fluctuation from min to max we can check out some charts april of 1978 it looks like where that would have been a real smooth buy at around one dollar a share and then you can see they did a few splits two for one two for one as the price started going up for several decades and of course they crashed in the late 80s they were also affected by the 2000 internet bubble where they had a huge peak right before then. And of course they reached their all time high back in early 2018 at around $270 a share. But they have consistently paid dividends dating as far back as 2002. Five pennies a share, as you can see it gets more and more as the dick as the years pass where now it looks like 65 cents per share and they are very consistent with their dividends which is something you like to see out of a large corporation that's bringing in top-notch revenue some statistics so their market cap is clearly down from a year ago 6 out of 32 Almost one sixth of the market cap was dropped from a year ago. Enterprise value nonetheless is up from a year ago, but slowly and gradually falling quarter over quarter. Almost double the price to book ratio, which is about what they've been for the several past few quarters. And so you can see they have a, one of those strange fiscal years ending on May 31st. Very slim margins, almost 2%. That's something that a lot of retailers will have margins that slim. Revenue was only down 2.5%, so they weren't too badly affected by COVID year on a year over year basis. Earnings not showing any growth. Looks like they have about five billion of cash on hand, thirty-six billion dollars of debt in the most recent quarter, book value of sixty-nine point eight dollars and billions. Five point one billion operating cash flow, which is really nice. The last stock split was in ninety-nine, right before the internet bubble. Twenty million shares not in the float. 
and 7.7% Hoba Insiders, which is a respectable percent over 300,000 employees, which makes them, I'm sure, one of the largest employers in America. Founder CEO, who's one of the few founders of a company that still remains a CEO for since its inception and almost 50 years ago. So he's stayed true to his company for a majority of his life, in fact. And here's some of the key executives. And by the way, Fred Smith is actually one of the highest paid CEOs in the country. So it was slightly down year over year by about five, 500 million. But it's still up. If you go back to two years ago and even further back, cost of revenue was slightly up. Net income was actually up year over year, but down from two years back. So we can see that they're slightly affected by COVID, but not as bad as some of the other industries and sectors. And a quarterly basis. Again, slightly down as of recent, but still fluctuating quarter over quarter cost revenue fluctuating net income actually lost money in the most recent quarter at least two common shareholders which was the first time since a year ago where they lost two billion dollars we saw their assets are growing vastly year over year Cash flow, cash flow positive, slightly growing every quarter for the most part in terms of operating cash flow. If you don't include the year ago quarter, they do have some free cash flow, 656 million, not as much as a year ago. Here we can see they are within the transportation industry amongst the industrial sector. And Guru Focus has them actually at number five behind Union Pacific, UPS, CSX, and Norfolk Southern. UPS, as most people know and use, is probably their biggest competitor. Here I sorted by net margins. So that's one thing, if anything, or I'd definitely like to see FedEx improve on because their margins are almost unacceptable compared to all of their competitors who are somewhere even in double digits who are sitting at almost nearly break even. But they do pay a respectable dividend. one point six five percent which puts them in about the middle range compared to their biggest competitors here you can see guru focus breaks down a bunch of values analyzing the company in all sorts of different ways I'm not gonna speak on all of this but you can just pause if you want and take out of it what you want essentially they're a growing company They've been hit a bit by COVID, but they, looks like they'll come out strong. They do have some tough competition. Yeah, they took a loss last quarter, but they bring in so much revenue and they have plenty of cash on hand that it shouldn't affect them for years to come. Here's a cool Seeking Alpha breakdown of their peers. Really just want to mainly look at FedEx and UPS, two of the biggest couriers in the United States. So we can see UPS is worth more than double that of FedEx. It has less employees. In 52 weeks, they're eerily almost exactly the same change from their high but FedEx has almost doubled from their yearly low 
Price to sales. EPS is doing a bit better. Price to book, one of my favorite data to analyze. So it looks like FedEx is doing a far better on price to book than UPS. So you can't always go by a market cap. Doesn't at all determine the true value of a company. Revenue growth, looks like UPS is doing a bit better on revenue growth for the past year at least. FedEx has them beat on a five year CAGR. Then income is down vastly on a three year change whereas UPS is up. But on a diluted year over year change more than double whereas UPS is down. So it looks like they're swapping places on who's better than who on almost every other category. Gross profit margins, FedEx has not beat. But then when it comes down to the net, UPS has not beat. So UPS is definitely taking in higher percentage returns on the net. If you held both these companies on 10 years, UPS, not including dividends, outbeat FedEx by about 8%. And then a one year change UPS. Actually UPS has them beat on almost any every single time frame. Every single time frame they have them beat. And they pay better dividends. Net income you can see the difference. More than double the cash for UPS. FedEx has a bit more debt. And CapEx, FedEx is spending slightly more money than UPS. So make of it what you will, but I think I've made up my mind as to who's better of these two competitors based off of this page alone. I thought this was a really cool breakdown by Zacks, where you can see their line of business, specifically how much revenue they were able to create from each line. So it's Express being their number one revenue driver followed by FedEx Ground, FedEx Freight who as you can see on the top right was they eventually bought the Flying Tigers and they have a decent amount of freight revenue and most of these were actually negative on the surprise in the most recent quarter I'm not even showing expectations on these two average daily volume so the volume was actually down on these daily packages on every category except whatever category this is, it was up. And weight as well, it's interesting. Daily freight weight was up though, quarter over quarter. And then on an annual basis, you can see it doesn't track everything but FedEx Express, their number one rev driver, was slightly down year over year. And it was the lowest it's been since 2017 fiscal year. Here's a lot of the insider transactions for the past month. Big numbers from the executives. Here on MarketBeat, I want you to check out their earnings history. Here's consensus for the future earnings. And then here we have their most recent earnings. Or reported next to the gap PPS. Let's check out actual row. Down from the past quarter. Quarter over quarter somewhat fluctuating up and down for the past several years but it's definitely gross from the past two years in terms of revenue and earnings it's been fluctuating up and down but are definitely growing in terms of long term for revenue and bottom line net income Here's MSM Money. Check out the analysis. Management effectiveness. Income per employee. 
not too great, 7,000 per employee, but it's in line compared to their industry. Inventory turnover is 36.6, .6, which is higher than their industry. Asset turnover is a bit higher as well. We have Finviz, one of my favorite sites to do analysis on. You can see lots of green for the future years. Sales quarter over quarter, that's a drop that we already knew about. Recent upgrade from JP Morgan, which is slightly higher than the current price. Lots of changes in early July, which is right around when they announced their fourth quarter report. And for the most part, it looks like positive. I'll perform, buy, I'll perform, perform. And they, looks like almost every analyst raised their targets as well. Let's go to the bottom. We can see some insiders moves they've been making here's a sale, some big sales, huge sale here by CEO and some small buys at tip ranks they actually gave them a really good outperform rating um, analysts have been positive looks like for the most part everyone's positive to neutral except for insiders and of course their fundamentals which you'll see majority of companies posting negative fundamentals due to COVID. Check out some analysts. There's the upgrades that we saw. Insiders. Some big sales. There's the f CEO, Fred Smith, taking a nice little $18 million sale. Other than that, no big moves, really. An informative, informative buy, actually, by John Edwardson seven months ago. And right around here, so he's about break-even. Um, if you're a golf fan, you already know that they sponsor the FedEx Cup. Some interesting side note. Justin Thomas, current leader. And they are getting involved in AI, or I should say ro robots, which I'm a fan of. If you want to survive or thrive for years and generations to come, you're going to just have to accept the future. So they're, you know, see here the little robot that they're implementing, partnering with Walmart, Target, Walgreens, and Pizza Hut to get that delivery to the consumers. And they're testing it in Memphis. But I do see this becoming more prominent by FedEx and other delivery services, retailers in the future. There's just no telling how soon it'll be. And here you can see they want to use it for same-day delivery for local retailers to consumers. But they want it to be safe and environmentally friendly. This was not even a year ago. Mayor of New York, Mayor Bill de Blasio, was saying that FedEx should never get a robot to do New Yorkers' job. They have the finest workers in the world. Here's some interesting news. It looks like FedEx CEO is a fan of the blockchain. Says it'll be a game changer. Confirmed it with their CIO Rob Carter. And this is back in 2018. Crucial for cross-border shipments. Potentially first time ever to make the information available for everybody. And they joined the Blockchain and Transportation Alliance after UPS had already been on that board. But yeah, it's good to see that the CEO is a fan of the blockchain, which 
no matter how risky or worrisome it may seem or appear to be, I do think it's a good idea to at least, for corporations to at least have interest in it and hear out the value and potential of it in the future, especially with the dollar value dropping as it has been in recent months. Before we check out their social media presence, I did want to state a random fact that FedEx is actually the designated global transporter of every panda in the world. So they definitely have that segment monopolized successfully. FedEx, connecting people and possibilities around the world. Almost at 200, or almost at 300,000 followers. Can we get 300? Oh, that would have been cool though. Some Neat Shoes by Footjoy, who I believe is uh, giving donations to St. Jude. I guess I'll leave a link in the description to donate to St. Jude, why not? Throwback Thursday, it's pretty cool. So they're getting some decent engagement. Never mind. Oh well. Looks like they get complaints and then they hide them. But regardless, let's look at their competitors. UPS. It's a cool uh, background image. Let's reimagine your small business. So slightly less followers. Engagement is about the same. Actually, it looks like it's slightly better. They may be paying for ads though. I could be wrong, but their engagement seems like it's actually better. And then we can look on the number one terms of market share. Yeah, Union Pacific. Hmm, looks like they they don't really know what social media is. A measly fifty thousand followers. So I would hope that they're not running ads to have a measly fifty K compared to their competitors despite the fact they have the largest market share. This might have been a ad. Actually, decent engagement for the small amount of 50,000 followers. Looks like they're putting out some pretty interesting articles and some really nice photography as well. By the way, one random fact I just remembered is that FedEx is headquartered in Memphis. I'm sure for several reasons, but one being that that the airports and around that area rarely ever cancel or delay due to weather conditions. I thought that was fairly interesting. It has come down to this. We've analyzed FedEx, their history, their management, their financials, what they're involved in, their plans for the future and everything for the most part overall as a company. I like FedEx as a midterm hold. Even though they their CEO is a fan of blockchain, it it does have risk. I'm definitely not promoting or downplaying the potential of cryptocurrency, but it does involve risk. So I would hope that FedEx treads carefully in that area. They do have lots of competition staring directly at them and throwing punches. And even Amazon, who as we know is now one of the largest companies in the entire world, has actually cut ties with FedEx ground and express fully, I want to say last year. but. 
According to FedEx executives, it was only a small portion of their business anyways. I want to say he said it was about 2 to 1% of their overall business. So according to their statements, they really shouldn't be getting that hurt that bad from it. As they will be focusing more of their efforts on Amazon's biggest competitors being Walmart, Target, and such. Nonetheless, I do see FedEx having potential in the near to midterm. They're kind of close to their 52 week high. They are up on year to date by about $10 more or less. I'll go ahead and move them to here, but cautiously. I'd probably put an asterisk by it. I kind of think they maybe belong more in the C tier, but the fact that they are in a vastly growing industry, especially nowadays and especially during the COVID era, where less people are walking to and from businesses to acquire their goods and services. FedEx is sort of well placed in a sense that they are that middleman of transporting the goods to and from businesses and clients. But they are in a tough industry, a very competitive industry. And they better watch out for Amazon, who, even though they say their business isn't affected by it, Amazon could be grabbing more and more of at least the retail sector, just like they have done in the past two to three decades. Regardless, FedEx does pay a dividend not too high. They kind of have a slightly high P.E. ratio. Their revenue has been fluctuating up and down along with their bottom line in recent quarters. I like their management. Hedge funds seem to have belief in the company, as of recent at least. I would probably wait to see a drop in price in this company, since they're near their 52 week high already. I don't think I've ever owned them, but I have traded options on them in the past. So again, I put them here cautiously because of the tough competition, but they're that high because it's a growing industry. Definitely had fun in valuing this company. Be very interested to see how well they do in it within the next decade as we proceed to the 2020s. So yeah, stay safe. And best wisely. Peace.